Hey, hey, what's up everybody, it's Rutech. Today we're talking about the best $800 gaming PC you can build in 2023. So you may be wondering, what are these little bottles you've been seeing in my previous videos in YouTube Shorts? This is Magic Mind, and it's a shot drink that'll boost your whole day. So I've been drinking one of these every morning for the past four days, and it's already drastically changed my workflow. Now, I love doing YouTube as my job. Editing videos is great. Filming videos is great, but it gets really tedious, and that makes it tiring. And of course, coffee helps, caffeine helps, but caffeine can have some negative side effects, right? For some, it gives you anxiety, gives you headaches, and then sometimes it makes you have to rush over to the bathroom. And you know, I still love coffee, but with Magic Mind, you pretty much get all the good effects of coffee without those bad side effects, plus some health benefits. They print them right here on the label. You get matcha, which obviously boosts your energy, adaptogens, which are good for relaxation, nootropics, which keep you focused, and immunity, which means vitamin C, D, and echinacea, which is a flower herb that has a lot of health benefits. Now how about flavor? You might have noticed this is like a weird green color, it looks like one of those gross health drinks, but I can assure you it does not taste like those gross health drinks. It has a minty fruity flavor, and it actually tastes really good. Either way, if you want a healthy alternative to coffee, if coffee's not doing it for you anymore, like me, or you just want a drink that gets your health up every morning, I highly, highly recommend Magic Mind, and you can find the link to it in my description. All right, let's get started. First up, we have the motherboard, which is the ASRock B660M Pro RS. The only two things we'll be needing from this box is the motherboard itself and the IO shield. Let's also unbox the CPU, which is the i5-12400F. Now you may wonder why the 12400 and not the 13400. Well, the price difference between the two processors is pretty big, whereas the performance difference is pretty small, especially for gaming. Also, that cooler that came in the box, we won't be using that. So get your CPU, slowly and carefully remove it from its plastic casing, then you can lift up this lever right here, open up the bracket, and locate this triangle on the bottom left of the CPU. That should be facing the bottom left of the motherboard. Carefully install the CPU into its socket, then give it a little wiggle to make sure it's good. After that, just reverse what we did earlier with the lever and bracket. Next up, we have the RAM, which is the ADATA XPG Z1 memory. This particular kit is two sticks of 8GB, 3200MHz CL16 memory, for a total of 16 gigs, which is more than enough for modern gaming. I'm also a big fan of how this RAM looks as it fits in any style of build. We're going to be installing this RAM in the second and fourth DIMM slots, so make sure you open up those retention brackets. Then you can place the RAM into its slot and use your thumbs to click it into place. Now for storage, one terabyte of Crucial's P3 Plus. This is some extremely fast storage, especially for the price. You'll notice that Windows, files, and games will all load super fast. And what's super cool is the motherboard comes with an additional M2 slot if you ever want to upgrade. Anyway, go ahead and remove this heatsink, which is directly below the CPU, and then install your Crucial P3. Now with this particular motherboard, you don't have to use that included tiny M2 screw that came with the P3. We're just going to use the heatsink to secure the storage drive into place. Before we do that though, make sure you remove that protective sticker. Then we can reinstall that heatsink. Last thing we're going to install onto the motherboard before we put it into the case is the cooler. For this build, I chose the Deepcool AK400. Couple great things about this cooler. It performs phenomenally. It very obviously fits the theme of our build. And if you ever decide to upgrade the CPU down the road, you most likely won't have to replace this cooler as it has a 220 watt TDP. Anyway, in the box, you'll find this bag, which has a ton of parts, most of which we won't be needing. We'll only need this bracket, this bag of screws and nuts, and this back plate. But first, make sure all these jack screws are pushed to the edge of their slot. With that done, we can install the back plate on the back of the motherboard. Make sure it's in place, and then you can flip the motherboard back over. Next up, from this bag, you'll want to grab four of these spacers. Place them on top of all four of those jack screws. Next up, grab that metal bracket 
and simply plant it on top of those spacers. Do make sure it's in this exact orientation. Then with those four screws that were in the same bag, you can go ahead and fasten that bracket. Make sure those screws are pretty snug. Now we can finally install the heatsink, but first we have to remove that fan as it's in the way of one of the fastening screws. And don't forget to remove the protective plastic. Bear in mind this does come with pre-installed thermal paste, so no need to put any on the CPU. Line the screws up with their mounts, and then fasten the heatsink. Now when fastening, make sure you're alternating between the two screws. Maybe do three twists on one, three twists on the other, and keep doing that until there's a decent bit of resistance. You definitely don't want to overfasten, but make sure it's snug. And then you can reinstall the fan. It kind of just clicks into place using those metal braces. And last but not least, coming out of that fan will be this cable, which we're going to plug into the header labeled CPU fan. And now we can finally start putting things into the case. First, remove both side panels. The glass panel is held in place with a magnet, and the back panel can be removed after loosening these two screws. You'll find this bag in the power supply bay. It's your best friend. It has all the screws we'll need for the rest of this build. While we're at it, I'm also going to remove this rear fan because I'll be replacing it with a different one later that'll match the aesthetic of the build. Right next door is where we're going to install the IO shield. This part came out of the motherboard box. In this exact orientation, install the IO shield. All you really need to do is apply even pressure along the sides until it clicks into place. And now, finally, 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 we can put the motherboard into the case. The best way to install it is to simply align it with its IO shield. Remember that bag from earlier? Well, in that bag is another bag, which contains these screws, which we're gonna use to fasten the motherboard. There's eight total that you need to install, three up top, three down the middle, and two on the bottom. Now it's time to install a power supply, the EVGA 600BR. Now power supply availability has been pretty weird lately, so I'll put a few options in the description in case this particular one is out of stock, they all install the exact same. 600 watts of 80 plus bronze certified power is more than enough and leaves a ton of room for upgrading. Make sure you install the supply with the fan facing downwards, and then using the four screws that came in the box, you can fasten the supply into the case. And now the most annoying part of any build, wiring everything up. You'll notice there's two different bundles of cables, a bundle coming from the front of the case, and a bundle coming out of the power supply. We're gonna start with this 24 pin cable that comes out of the power supply. Route it through this middle cutout, and then plug it into this connector on the motherboard. Next up, we have the CPU power cable. This is gonna go through this top right cutout. This one's always a little annoying to install as it's a pretty tight space, but I can assure you with commitment and a little bit of patience, you'll get it plugged in. Now let's move on to the front panel connectors, starting with this USB 3.0 cable. Wrap this through the bottom metal cutout, and then plug it into the connector that's directly below that 24 pin cable. Next we have the HD audio connector. This will get routed through the very bottom right cutout. Just like all the other connectors, this guy only goes in one way. You wanna be extra careful with this one though. You could bend some pins if installed incorrectly. And lastly, everyone's favorite, the front panel cables. These will go through that bottom metal cutout, and will get plugged into the header labeled F panel. Now, little life hack, the only two you really need to install are the power button and the reset switch. And it actually does not matter which way you plug them in. As long as they're plugged into their two assigned pins, they'll work no matter what. And now it's time to get this case ready for the graphics card. Loosen up this plate and then remove the top two PCIe brackets after removing their screws. And the graphics card we're using for this build is the RX 6650 XT. Now you don't have to use this particular 6650 XT. You can get one from Asus, from MSI. They all perform the same. Anyway, this is a card that'll run all your games at 1080p and 1440p at ultra settings with absolute ease. You could definitely sneak a few games in 4K as well, but you'll have to mess with the graphics settings. Make sure you click down this retention bracket and then install the graphics card. You'll know you got it once that retention bracket clicks back into place. And then using those same screws we removed earlier, fasten the graphics card. Also, make sure to give the card a little bit of leverage using your other hand. And don't forget to plug in the PCIe power cable. Now let's wrap the build up by installing the fans. 
So I went with cheap Molex fans just to stay within the $800 price range. And technically there's nothing wrong with that. It's just Molex fans run at 100% speed 100% of the time. So they're a little louder than four pin fans. In the description, I'll put links to both Molex fans and four pin fans in case you wanna be able to adjust your fan curves and have a little bit of a quieter PC. Anyway, installing these fans is pretty easy. Take off the case's front cover and then install the fans by fastening them on all four corners. The screws come included in the fan box. So for Molex fans, to power them, you daisy chain them all together. So you pretty much just plug them into each other, right? And then coming out of the power supply, you'll find a connector that looks identical to the fans Molex connectors. You plug the power supply Molex connector into the bottom of the daisy chained fan Molex connectors. And this is how it should look in the end. For the exhaust, I also went with some cheap white Molex fans from up here. They're pretty well made and fit the aesthetic perfectly. For the rear exhaust fan, make sure it's facing this exact direction and then use the four included screws to install it. Next up, the top exhaust fans. Make sure the fans are facing this direction and then install them using the included screws. Like I said, these are also Molex, so they receive power the same exact way. Daisy chain the fan Molex connectors together and then plug in the power supply Molex. And with that, the PC build is finished. It's a truly beautiful looking PC. Now let's get windows and drivers onto it. First up, we need to get Windows onto a USB drive. So find a USB drive that is at least eight gigabytes in size and plug it into another Windows device. On that computer, you'll want to Google Windows 10 ISO and then click the first Microsoft.com link that comes up. The link to the site is also in my description. Scroll down and click download tool now. And when it's downloaded, run the file. It'll load a little bit and it'll want you to agree to its license terms, click accept, and after that, you'll want to make sure you select Create Installation Media, and then click Next. Ensure that all of these options are correct, and then click Next. Select USB flash drive, and then select the drive that you have plugged into your computer. And now it'll install the boot media onto that drive. When that finishes, put the USB into the new computer, and then press the boot button. You'll then be taken to this screen. Make sure all the options are correct, and then click Next and Install Now. For now, just click I don't have a product key and then select either Windows 10, Home, or Pro. Then you'll want to read the applicable notices and license terms at least 20 to 30 times, click accept, and then next. Then click custom install Windows only and select the only drive that should show up, which is our crucial P3. Click next one last time and it'll install Windows. After installing Windows, it'll restart and then take you to this screen, which I don't really need to walk you through. You just put your name, your password, security questions, things like that. But anyway, now we're running an unactivated version of Windows. So head over to digitalchillmart.com, my personal favorite place to get Windows 10 licenses and then select the version of Windows that you installed. Not only are these prices way cheaper than retail price, but if you use coupon code RUTEC, you get 50% off. Once they email you the code, go to the search bar, type in activation settings, click the first result, and then select change or enter product key, and then enter your license key. Now that Windows is activated, let's turn on XMP to make sure our RAM is running at max speed. Boot up the PC, spam the F2 or delete key until you're taken to this page, and then click the XMP profile button. It should say profile one is DDR4-3200. Then you can click this button at the top to save and exit. And lastly for drivers, I'll have the links to all necessary drivers for this computer in my description. And last but not least, we have the benchmarks. For this section of the video, no commentary. I'm just gonna play some music in the background and let the numbers speak for themselves. See you guys in the outro.
So that'll wrap it up for today's build tutorial video. Make sure if you have any questions, drop a comment below or join my Discord. The link will be in the pinned comment. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like. And if you enjoy the content that you're seeing, I would really appreciate it if you dropped a sub. Thanks for watching. Peace out.